All right, guys, we're at the uh, we're at the archery range now. I kind of asked permission for uh, <clears throat> to be able to use this extra range that they have at the, at the uh, place I go to, uh, which is Cabin Fever Sporting Goods, by the way, in Victoria, Minnesota. Thank you very much. Um, so we're picking off uh, where, where we left off yesterday. This this brace is now at eight and a half inches, and I'm actually shooting my bear shaft. My bear shaft is um, weighs well without the feathers on it. It weighs. Uh, 590 grains, I believe, 595, something like that. It is a 500 spine arrow, 30 inch, 100 grain brass insert with a 200 grain tip. Now, what I'm gonna show you, now this is actually pretty close to tune um, with my brace sight normally with this bow, which is like eight, and, like I said, eight and three eighths or eight and, eight and a quarter. So um, at eight and a half inches, it's not that much more. So it's not gonna show too much of a, of a, of a weak uh, of, of a weak spine. However, um, it will show weak, like I said in the previous video, and then it will show, it'll definitely show that it's stiff when I lower this brace height, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shoot a couple, and I'm actually gonna move you guys kind of close to the, close to the target, and I think you'll be able to see, I think you'll be able to see it hitting um, a little bit stiff. I'm going to take a few shots and I'm going to set the chronograph up, take a few shots through that, and then I'm going to lower the brace and we're going to repeat all this stuff. So sit tight. All right, shot number one. Here we go. I don't know if you can see this very well. Point is to the right. Knock is to the left. It's this way. So it entered like this, meaning that it's slightly weak. I'm gonna do that again. I'm doing this from uh, 10, 12 yards. Shot number two. Again, slightly knock left, point right, which again would make sense. It's not a drastic, it's not drastic like this because this this arrow was already tuned um, point weight wise and spine wise to what I'm already shooting out of here. I'm only a quarter inch distance uh, greater in my um, <clears throat> in my brace height than I normally run it, so I wouldn't expect it to be a drastic change. Now we're going to shoot this through. The chronograph, I'm gonna set that up and uh, I'll give you the numbers. Okay, shot number one, 590 grain arrow, minus the feather, so it'd be like 580 something-ish, okay? Still with the eight and a half inch brace height. One thirty-four. Shot number two. One thirty-two. And by the way, I'm shooting at an angle a little bit. It's tough to tell into that uh, um, a target over there, so. It's not quite showing the, um, the, the slightly weak arrow like it was before, but I'm trying not to hit the sensors on the chronograph that I don't own, so. Shot number three. 135. We're gonna do one more. One thirty eight. All 
Okay, so we, prob we probably established that it's about 136-ish, right? We did 134 for the 36. Uh, I've gotten 138 before. So let's just say it's about 136, 138 feet per second um, if, if I'm doing my release right and all that stuff. Um, I wasn't quite doing it perfect because, again, I'm trying to make sure I'm far enough behind the chronograph that, it's, that it works, but also not hit these screens. So, um, so figure about 136, 138 feet per second. Um, now we're going to reduce the brace height back down to seven and a half inches. I'm going to do all that stuff over again. We'll do the chronograph. We'll do the, um, uh, the spine test, and then uh, I'll show you guys the results. <clears throat> all right, guys. So I have reset the brace height to seven and a half inch. And now we're gonna take a couple shots. And I'm actually gonna maybe try and get a better straight on angle for you guys so I don't at least hit my phone. But it's a shorter brace height now, it's seven and a half inch. We've gone down a full inch. So what we're expecting to see, what I'm expecting to see, is that now, instead of this thing being, um, you know, let's just say you're looking at it like this, instead of it impacting um, slightly weak, meaning tail left for me, okay, point right, the right-handed shooter, now the tip is gonna be out to the left and then the tail is gonna be out to the right a little bit, indicating that it's not curving around um, uh, the riser very well. So see what happens. I'm going to take a few shots and uh, we'll see again. What I did is I reset the clicker. I reset the clicker with my control arrow that had the, you know, the zip tie on it so that this is still going off at 28 inches. I'm still drawing at 28 inches and um, we're just starting off at a lower brace. See what happens. Okay, shot number one. Again, tough to tell the angle, slightly stiff. This, the tip, or the, the, um, the knock, is slightly that way, and the tip is slightly to the left. Shot number two. That one was a little more drastic. If you can see that, it's pretty, It's a lot more drastic where I've got the knock that way and the tip this way. We're going to do one more shot like that. I was a little sloppy on my release on that one, but again, pretty drastic. Um, point left, tail right. I'll do one more time just for uh, just just to satisfy everybody. Well, there you have it. I'm shooting dead on. You guys can see. But again, this impacted this, you know, the tip was to the left, knocks to the right. This is a stiff arrow. We lowered brace height, okay? We lowered brace height. It's a stiffer arrow. So what did we do when we lowered brace height? We unflexed these limbs at all stages. The limbs are not flexed as much now at brace height. These, the tip to tip distance is not as uh, large. I apologize, my phone keeps giving me fits every time I touch the screen uh, to move it. The tip to tip distance is not, it is actually greater, okay? It's a longer tip to tip distance, which means the limbs are more unflexed and they're more unflexed both at brace and at full draw. Because remember, our string is longer now, okay? So the two connecting points are longer. Just like when we got a short brace height, the connecting string between the two, the connecting line was shorter. So they have to be shorter at all stages. All right, so I'm gonna shoot this through the chronograph um, 
with the shorter brace height and we're going to see what's uh, what's going to happen there now some people are going to say well maybe it's uh, it's probably going to go faster uh they're thinking it's going to go faster because it's on the string longer well perhaps i don't know we're going to see um that might very well be the case i don't if it is i don't think it's drastic personally i think they're going to be very close within one or two feet per second because again it's on the string longer with the, with the shorter brace height. However, the limbs don't have as much energy in them. They're about a pound or so, three quarters of a pound, a pound, maybe a little bit more, um, less than they are at the higher brace height. Like we were talking last night um, when I was doing the, uh, uh, the poundage thing. By the way, I want to clarify something in there. Uh, the very first uh, one I got at the lower brace height was like 43. That was a wrong reading. Uh, I was kind of doing that late at night. Um, the, a the average readings I was getting, I, was, I know I was kind of having some fits with my, uh, 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 my, my scale there, and after I fixed the batteries and all that stuff, the lower brace height, I was averaging about 42 pounds, and the higher brace height, I was averaging about uh, 43 to 43 and, and, and a half almost uh, pounds. So it was, about, it was easily a pound higher with the eight and a half inch brace height. Anyway, so we're gonna shoot through the chronograph again here. We're gonna do, you know, maybe like four shots, five shots, and then we'll see what the difference is with the lower brace height. Here we go. One forty. And again, I apologize for the sloppy arrow flight a little bit. I'm trying not to hit the screens. Shot number two. One thirty-five. I think we can cancel that one out because I didn't quite hit my clicker on that one. So we're going to redo shot number two. 139. Shot number three. 140. Well, I think that averaged 139, 140. I think I'm okay with calling that a, um, that that experiment proved that maybe yes, the arrow, if it's on the string a little bit longer, uh, gains you maybe two to three feet per second, maybe. Um, it was a, uh, what are we talking about? What we were saying, the average before with the higher brace height, <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm still out of, out of uh, I can barely talk. Uh, the average before was 137, 138 feet per second uh, at the most. Now this is averaging 140. So it's clearly one or two feet per second, about two, two, to, two to maybe three feet per second faster at the lower brace height because yes, it is on the string a little bit longer. Okay, so two in, uh, another inch longer. That's fine, however, in the, I mean, two to three feet per second means absolutely nothing. And in the traditional world, speed means absolutely nothing. So when we're, lo when we're looking to tune, when we're, doing, when we're looking to do this stuff, um, the number one reason to adjust brace height, obviously, is the feel of the bow and uh, the sound of the bow. But after that, when you get into micro-tuning, you can move brace up and down a little bit to fine-tune your point weight, to fine t or, 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 or your arrow spine. So like I said, if you have one that's acting slightly stiff, you can raise the brace height, which means shortening the string, which means flexing the limbs more, which means they have more poundage in the string or in, in the limbs, which means more energy is imparted into the arrow, which means it makes the arrow behave dynamically weaker. Um, if, the, if it's a little bit too weak, again, the opposite. If it's a little bit too weak, you, un, uh, you unwrap the string a little bit, you lower the brace height, that string is longer now, the tip to tip distance is longer at all points through the draw, okay? I don't know if I've reiterated that 50,000 times by now. 
at brace as well as at full draw. Um, there's less energy in those limbs because they're less flexed, which means there's less poundage, which means less force goes into the arrow, which means it, it makes a slightly uh, weak arrow behave dynamically stiffer to get that thing back in line. So, um, so I hope you understand some of these concepts. These aren't exactly uh, tuning 101 uh, for, you know, for, for getting in the, in, into archery and stuff, but you need to understand what happens. And maybe this is like a 201 level kind of uh, uh, tuning or, or, or understanding. So anyway, so for those of you guys who keep harping about speed and what it does to the arrow as far as like spine, get that out of your head. Two feet per second, two and a half feet per second is not going to make a difference. We are talking about the initial hit of energy into the arrow. That's all we're talking about, how flexed those limbs are. So I hope um, I've, I've proven to you that, um, uh, that, that a longer brace height puts more energy into the bow. Um, this, is a known, this is a known thing, but I, I, I don't think people really know why it does that. And I hope this kind of explains why it does that. And uh, you know, if you're gonna go you know, doing this kind of tuning, remember, if you're gonna do an apples to apples comparison, you gotta go through some of these uh, things that I did, like, like having the, you know, the control arrow here with, with my set stop. And, I, and I've re I have a tape measure with me. I've remeasured this every, every time we've changed brace height. So, you know, we're always pulling to 28 inches because that's going to be our control. Um, I'm resetting the clicker to go off exactly at 28, so I'm not pulling a little bit too far, a little bit too less. So this was um, the best of a, um, apples to apples uh, comparison that, that I could do. So anyway, if you guys have any questions or if you have any comments, I would love to hear it uh, in, your, uh, in, in the comments uh, below. So thanks for sticking with me with my gravelly voice. Uh, this is really tough to talk right now. It's really dry. And so thanks for putting up with that. And uh, if you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. If you belong to other archery groups or uh, you know, other channels, or please promote this because um, you know, I'm not saying I'm, I'm some sort of like tuning guru, but I don't think there's enough empirical testing out there to show um, what you do, you know, what happens exactly when, when we change something and why it happens. So um, I think I've done that today. So like, share, subscribe, and thank you for tuning in to uh, Bow Hunting Soul. I'll see you guys next time.